The Way of the Great East End. Kirk Ronan's fortunes were growing. It had recently been one of the fastest growing towns on the island of Soda, thanks to its booming industries that were growing across the town. New houses being built, new shops and pubs and churches opening across the town. The Kirk Road and Nine was mainly worked by Molly, also supplemented by engines such as James and Stanley. However, Demand for the trains had grown more since the town was growing in population, so the fat controller needed a temporary solution until a permanent one could be found. However, there was only one engine available, and the fat controller was not too pleased. Oh no, he groaned. I just hope that he does not cause any more trouble this time he's here. The engine in question was called Alpha. When Alfred pulled into the shed, all the engines eyed him with disgust. Oh no, is that not you, 98462? grumbled Gordon. I am not 98462, grumbled Alfred. My name is Alfred! Huh, <laughs> but you're still 98462 to us, replied Henry. The name's Alfred! snapped Alfred. And why might you be here? asked James. Because I am supposed to be helping my cousin Margaret. Uh, I mean, Molly. She needs help because she's just a little lovey and she doesn't really know the way to the Great Eastern. The engines were shocked at Alfred's comments about Molly, but they decided not to say anything else and just ignore Alfred. Richard, however, did not fully understand about Alfred. Um, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what did he do? The other engines explained, but Alfred was having none of it. Shut up! He barked. Oh my, that's very rude of you, said Richard, offended, and he went back into his shed. The next morning, Molly was waiting at Napford Station when Alfred pulled in. My greetings, Margaret, he said in an oily voice. Uh, you know that I'm called Molly. That's your formal name, isn't it? And you are a great Easterner. And we have a sense of formality to keep. I know that, replied Molly. Well, I don't care. You are still called Margaret. That's what the builders gave you when they built you. You only took the name Molly because... Because... Um... But before Alfred could finish, Wilfred pulled in. And Wilfred was not happy to see Alfred either. Oh no, not him! Oh, not him too! Growled Alfred. And how are you doing dozing off at the castle at all hours? You shall be doing your work, not being a sleepy, dozy, dimwit! And you, um, are! And I'll see you haven't changed since the last time you went to the castle! Said Wilfred crossly. Um, I must feel sorry for you, Molly. <sighs> That's alright, sighed Molly. Alfred pulled away. Because of his desire to do things the way of the Great Eastern, Alfred was rough with the passengers compared to Molly and Rebecca and even James. As time went on, word of Alfred's roughness spread among the passengers and they gradually refused to travel with him until Alfred had empty trains. This is a disgrace! growled Alfred. I am supposed to be pulling passengers, but not a single passenger enters my carriage! What is going on? Molly pulled up. I think I have the answer. You are being too rough. 
You need to be more gentle with the passengers. And that's why I've been having fuller trains lately. And Rebecca has too. You need to let your anger go, Alfred. What happened many years ago happened. That's in the past. You're not 98462 now. You should create a different identity. <laughs> Stop it, nonsense! Snarled Alfred, and he wished Steve at Molly before storming out the station. He's so rude, said Rebecca. Maybe I should pull the next train. Well, uh, thanks, said Molly. A few days later at Kildane, some wedding guests were waiting at the station. The bride and groom had just walked onto the platform when Alfred pulled in. The wedding guests knew about Alfred's roughness. Why, good morning, he said. Are you going for a wedding? Well, you don't want to be late, do you? <laughs> so, climb aboard! But Alfred was surprised when the wedding guests did not move from the platform. What? What? Come on, are you sure you want to go to your wedding? Still, they didn't move. Alfred was getting frustrated. He blew his whistle at them. Come on! Get in! All aboard! We're not travelling with you, the wedding guests said. We're waiting for the next train because you're too rough, Alfred. Even if this means we're going to be late for the wedding, we'd rather have a smooth ride and be late than be bumped about and be on time. Alfred was livid! I can't believe it! I can't believe it! I can't believe it! I can't believe it! Snarled Alfred crossly. How dare they reject me? I'm going to show all my passengers as few as they are, all the way to the great Eastern. I used to be an express engine. I hold trains between London, Chelsea, Colchester, Newtwitch, and Norwich. I'll show them! I'll show them! I'll show them! Alfred was in such a temper that he wasn't paying attention to what he was doing. Slow down, Alfred! Called his driver. You're going too fast! But by the time they reached Kirk Road, and Alfred was going at a very dangerous speed indeed. The driver slammed on the brakes and jumped out of the cab, and there was nothing much he or the family could do other than just jump out. Then it happened. Hey, well, that's done it, said the station master. Look what you've done to me station. I thought Gordon popping through the wall was bad enough, but now you had to go and pop through it. Molly arrived with the wedding guests. She could see what had happened to Alfred. Um, are you alright, cousin? She asked. <laughs> Alfred growled. What do you think? You're just such a pansy. Why don't you go and pull your cousin out of here? Molly had had enough of her cousin's bad attitude and she decided to speak up. You know, Alfred, she said, these wedding guests here are late for their wedding because of your roughness. So that's why I had to pick them up and go as fast as I can so they could reach the church on time. And look at them running down the street. This is because of you, Alfred. You're nothing but angry and reckless. And your recklessness is caused by your temper. You need to let it go, Alfred. That isn't the way of the Great Eastern. I don't bear a grudge to anyone. But your grudges are so unhealthy that they stop you from doing your work or even helping me. You are disgraceful. I can't agree more, said the fat controller. Once you are pulled out, you are going to be repaired and you'll be sent straight back. And I request to your orders that you are punished. And what might that be? Well, it's up to the owners. 
but I don't think it'll take kindly to you wrecking the station wall for the second time. As the wedding was going on, Rebecca arrived to pull Alfred out. She was fed up with him as well. You know, you're such a no good bully. How could you even get yourself in mirror? <laughs> oh well, just be thankful that I'm coming to pull you out. And soon Alfred was out. He felt silly and foolish. After he had been repaired, he was sent away in disgrace, leaving Molly and the other engines to work the Kirk Ronan line alone. But soon, the Fat Controller would have to find a permanent solution. However, he decided to look further afield from the mainland to find a solution. He had his eyes on Austria. That is a good story.